Welcome back to our cable cowl and fingerless mitts knit along. Now we're ready to use our cable needle and twist these stitches to make a cable. Then we'll finish off this cowl by binding off, blocking, and seaming up this little beauty. If you still need supplies, check out OneBigHappy.com. Let's get started. So we are going to be learning how to do the cable twist. In the pattern, you're going to see the abbreviation 4 over 4 LC, which means 4 over 4 left cross. In the older versions of patterns that have cables in it, you may see the term C8F. That is the same thing as the 4 slash 4 LC. So I just want to clarify for you, this is a new abbreviation to explain the exact same thing. But this abbreviation actually gives the knitter a lot more information. And this was brought to me by our tech editor after I wrote this pattern. And I really like it, and so we've used it in this pattern to describe the cable technique that we'll be doing in this cowl and fingerless mitt knit along. So we are now ready to start on row five. I've got all my stitches set up here on my needles with my stitch markers in place. Row five starts out like all the rows with a knit three. So we're gonna knit one, two, and three. Again, slide our marker back into reverse stockinette for these next three, which is purling three, one, two, three. I'm gonna slide that marker. Now we're ready to perform our cable twist. We have eight stitches in this next section. Now a four over four left cross. So what that means is the first four stitches are coming off our needle and we're gonna knit the second set of four stitches. The way to hold those stitches in place is with a cable needle. This is designed with points on both, end, both ends and then this little dip in the center to hold our stitches. So to do this, we simply slide four stitches onto our cable needle, put it in that middle area and let them hang down here in front. I like to let them hang like that kind of gives me a little bit more room to work. Now we need to knit the next four stitches off of the left needle. These stay out of the way, hanging down here, and we slide around and knit these four. So one, two, three, and four. Now we're ready to do the left cross portion of this twist. You have two options. You can put these four stitches back onto the original needle or you can knit directly from your cable needle. I prefer to go ahead and direct, knit directly from the cable needle. So I just kind of slide things out of my way till I can get to where I need to and then knit one, two, three, and four. Now you have successfully crossed four over four left cross. And I'll show you what that looks like here. And then I'll show you on the finished cowl what that looks like as you go along. That is the section right here. We just crossed these first four stitches over the second four stitches and it makes this little wave right in here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and slip our stitch marker. We're gonna purl the next three stitches. And we're ready to make our second cable. Now this time I'm gonna show you using the other cable needle. Same process, same philosophy. These are just different methods of holding those first four stitches out of the way. This is a hook version and I slide the first four stitches onto the hook slide it on there it hangs down and out of your way so then you can come back in 
and knit the second set of four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And again, you can slide these back onto the original needle or you can knit straight off the cable needle. I like to slide it around and just knit straight off of this one. One, two, three, and four. That's how you use the hook cable needle. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide that stitch marker and purl three. Now in this pattern, I have set up three repeats of the cable. So you're gonna be doing three twists on that row when you do the twists. I think by setting it up for three, it gives us the distance that I wanted, but it also helps you create muscle memory on how to make those twists. So I hope that helps a little bit there for you. It did for me, it just seemed like Grouping it by threes really kind of got me in a groove of finishing the project and getting those cables knocked out and learning how to do it, which way I like. Now here's a, one last method of doing the cables that I wanted to show you. And there's plenty more out there, but these are the three that I was gonna show you this time. I use a double pointed needle. What you do is you go ahead and you slide the first three, or excuse me, the first four stitches onto your double pointed needle two, three, and four. Then I just let it hang out, just like we did with the cable needle. There's no dip or no hook, but I just let it hang there. And then I knit the next four stitches, just like I did before. And then knit those four straight off of the double pointed needle. And the, way, the reason why I chose a double pointed needle is because there's points on both sides of it. If I had used another straight needle, um, there'd be an end on the end of that needle and I wouldn't be able to knit from the other side. Um, you can use that if that's what you have. You just have to slide them back and forth so that you can work those stitches. It gets a little um, crazy, but you can do that. Whatever you're comfortable with, use that method. Whatever you have, use that. Um, but these three are uh, my favorite choices to use when I'm working in cables. And then, uh, so I finished that third twist. I'm gonna go ahead and purl these last three stitches. And then knit the last three stitches of the garter edge. And that is row five. One last trick I wanted to show you. When I finish row five, what I like to do and what I do to help keep myself on track, because I'm all about different ways to help keep myself on track, I get a locking stitch marker. This is one that looks like a little safety pen. These are from Clover. It's a locking stitch marker. I take my stitch marker and I go to my first cable twist and I go to the very last stitch of that cable twist and I hook through the front leg of that stitch lock my marker, and I let it hang there. So I place this locking stitch marker on the last stitch of row five where I've done the cable twist. So after I've done a few rows, if I've lost count, forgot to use my clicker, I can always go back and it'll tell me which stitch I did that twist on, and then I can count my stitches up to find out where I'm at in the pattern. That's why I use this trick right there to hold that spot so I know where I did that twist. Okay, so now we're on to row six. And I wanna show you this because this is the back side of that cable, the back side of where you twisted those stitches, and it looks a little funny. And I wanna show you that that's okay, that's what it's supposed to look like, and how that works itself out. So row six is same as always, we knit the first three stitches slide our stitch marker. We're on the back side of the work, so then we knit the next three stitches as well. Now you can look back and see the pattern starting to form. We have enough fabric on our needles where you can really kind of start to read your knitting. And this is the reverse stockinette. So we have the knit side on the wrong side. Then we slide our marker. Now this is the back side of the twisted stitches that we just made for that cable, and it's bunched up and it looks a little wobbly. It's okay. So now what we do is simply just purl across these eight stitches. 
you will see a little gap too. I want to show you that as well. There is a little gap here. That's okay, that's normal. It's gonna close itself up as we purl across this side. Just kinda wanna show you all the little different things that you might see that might trigger, uh-oh, am I doing this wrong? No, this is right, it's okay. Go ahead and purl across these eight stitches. It will work itself out. And then you'll see on this side too, we also have another little gap here. It'll close itself up as we continue. Slide that marker and then, and also just keep an eye on reading your knitting. You will see the pattern form and you'll really get to know, okay, wait, this something's next. Here's the stitch marker. What do I do next? It, it really kind of shines. You'll see it as you go along. Okay, then we'll slide this. I'm gonna purl across the next set of eight. I'm trying to work on my tension here. I like to hold my yarn so that I have a consistent tension. I usually wrap it around my ring finger and then up and over my index finger. I am purling, so I'm gonna bring it to the front and wrap it around. Almost there. Something else is coming up here that I want to show you. I'm knitting these three stitches here. Now I'm coming up to the stitch that has the locking stitch marker from the other side, and it's worked its way over to this side of my work. What I want to do is bring it to the front. Just push it on the other side of that stitch so that it's out of my way. I want to forget that it's there for right now and I don't want to knit into it or anything. It's attached to that stitch right there where I want it to be. Okay, so we've moved that forward and now I'm just gonna purl into the back side of that stitch. It's a little fussy this first time. As you get past this row, you won't have that issue again. It's just on that first purl after you've placed the locking stitch marker. And then we're going to knit these last three stitches, which is the garter edge again. And we are on row six of our pattern. Okay, so now we've finished row six. Go ahead and complete row seven and eight. If you lose track of where you're at, you can look at your little stitch marker here. You know that's going to be on row five. So you can go five, six, seven, eight. Eight ends the repeat. You start back over at once. So I kind of use that little dance speed in my head of five, six, seven, eight. Then I need to start back over at one. I hope that mantra helps you. It helped me a lot when I was making this project. Um, I liked how that worked in on that. Go ahead and finish these repeats of rows one through eight until your project's about 21 inches long. And for me, that was 16 repeats. Once you finish that, do two more rows of garter, which is knit every stitch, and then meet me back here and we'll bind off using the last stitch fix method. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have finished my two rows of garter stitch. And I wanted to point out here, this is my locking stitch marker. And I wanna show you how I count, um, just to kind of give you a better uh, perspective after we've gone through a few rows. We know that the cable twist was done on row five. So we've got five, six, seven, eight. I finished up that repeat and then I did my two rows of garter stitch. Now this is a smaller sample. Yours will be much longer. It'll have 16 repeats and be about 21 inches long. And now we're gonna show you how to bind off and I wanna give you a little trick on binding off that last stitch. So I've, been, I've already started to bind off and now we're gonna finish up here. And you just knit one and you take the first stitch, lift it up and over knit. This is normally, you know, the normal bind off. 
It's not until you get to the last stitch that you do something a little bit different. This last stitch fix method shores up the end of your work and makes it straighter. So you don't have that last st stitch that kind of leans out to the left on you. It gives you a more pointier straight end. Okay, so I'm down to one stitch left. You take that stitch that's on your left needle, move it to your right needle. Then you come down here and you pick up this little leg right here from the stitch underneath. And then you move your last stitch back on and then you knit through those two stitches together. And then lift this last stitch up and off. And as you can see here, it is straight up and down right there. You don't have that last stitch hanging off to the side. Straight up and down. Just gives you a nice, neat edge. And I'll show you on this finished one here. See how this edge is completely straight, nice and neat. And you don't have that last little wonky stitch. So I wanted to show you the last stitch fix method. Now that we've gone ahead and bound off and finished that, we will be ready to block our project. I've got my water here in my bowl, room temperature with a little bit of wool wash in it. I'm going to soak my project. Now your project is going to be 21 inches. I'm just working on my little sample project here. Now you don't want to wring your work. You want to let this soak for about 15 to 30 minutes. Let all the water get into your stitches. It makes the yarn bloom and it evens out your stitches. Since we're working with a cable, this part is really important because your cables tend to spread out more once you've blocked it. This yarn, when it gets wet, it does grow slightly. So be prepared for that. Okay, so I've let this soak. I'm squeezing, I left all, this is another important part, I have left all my tails hanging out. I did not weave in my ends yet. We're not gonna do that just yet. Okay, then we are going to bring our towel over here and lay out our project in our towel. The purpose for the towel is to get out any excess water. We're going to roll up our project in the towel this also helps us not disturb our stitches. The same reason why we don't wring it out is because we don't want to disturb those stitches. Okay, I like to squeeze. And this towel's wicking out any of the extra water. Sometimes if you have a second towel, um, a lot of times I will grab a second towel and roll it up again and squeeze it out. It just um, helps the drying process move along a little faster. Okay. So now it's nice and wet, and you'll see how it just stretches out. We want it to do that. And the reason for that is when you lay it on your blocking mat and you stretch it out, these cables just become more defined. You can see where the twists are, and you can even out your work here. So I get that all measured out, and... I like to place my blockers, and these are from Knitter's Pride. They're called Mindful Knit Blockers, and they're little combs that go right into this foam mat here. So I like to go on the inside of my edge work and push that down into the mat. And I'm, I'm doing this by, uh, you know, just by looking at it and my eye measurements here, what looks nice to me but I want these cables stretched out. Once your fabric dries, they will come back in, but by stretching them out now, your stitches are evening out. And I just kind of go right along here, pin that down. And because this is wet, it's almost like playing with clay. It, it has that move it around ability here, molding ability. And down here, this section right here, this is where your cables first start, where your repeat first starts. It does have a tendency to make the edge a little wavy. It's okay. That is the nature of the beast. 
when we're done seaming this, you won't see that part. That's why we did this garter edge here, was just to kind of hide that. I'm kind of putting a lot of these in here and I don't need this many. Let me pull that out and make this a little center. Whatever you're comfortable with, you just want to spread it all out, make it nice and pretty. Put one up here. There we go. I'm gonna, and I've got these smaller ones here. I'm gonna just use this up in this corner. I don't think I need another big one up there. Let's see. There we go. I think that looks nice. Nice and square. Now, like I said, yours is gonna be longer. And it's about 24 inches spread out once it's wet, but it will shrink back. Okay, let me look and see where I'm at here. I'm about eight and a half. When this dries, it's gonna shrink down about another inch. Don't be surprised when that happens. That's what it does. But for right now, all of my stitches seem pretty spread out and even, nice and pretty. So let this dry for about 12 hours or longer. Make sure it's completely dry. And the next, you seam it up and I'll show you how to do that. Once your cowl has dried, it'll look something like this. Now we need to seam it together so that um, it's circular and we can wear it around our neck. I have my tail from where I cast off. I have my tapestry needle here. What I'm gonna do is flip this over and turn the sides in, and then I'm gonna face it towards me. We're gonna be doing the mattress stitch, and this gives it a nice clean finish. I'm gonna be working from the front side of my work so I can see exactly where my needle is going in to make those stitches. I have my tail coming off this end of the side of the project. Now I want to dive into this side right here. I have two rows of garter stitch on both sides. I'm gonna go down below that row of garter stitch and pick up this first stitch right here and you'll see that it's even. Let's see here. You'll see that it's even with this row of stitching right here right before that garter stitch row starts. So I'm picking this one up and I'm going under that stitch. Then I'm gonna come back here and pick up its partner, the mirror image of it, right here and pick up that. And I'm gonna be crossing back and forth. Now you can do each stitch individually. I like to do that on the ends of the work so that I have more structure and it gives it more strength in that area because that's the area that um, takes on the most uh, stretchiness when you're putting it over your head. So I like to do every stitch on this area right here, going back and forth through that stitch right there. And that is that lip right underneath the garter ridge. I'm leaving my tension loose. I will close that up when I'm done. Okay, here is a good stopping point or a reference point to see where you're at. You can see where I've gone from reverse stockinette to the regular um, stockinette stitch here with the knit stitch facing me. I wanna make sure these two match up and they do right now. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna pick up that first stitch on this side and then, like I said, these are mirror images, so then I'm gonna go under that one. Now I'm at the point where I can kind of skip every other stitch underneath here, underneath here. This is right at the center of that cable, so I'm gonna get right in there so that I can close up that center. Here is the center of the cable right here. I'm gonna go under there. We're gonna do this back and forth all the way through by picking up under both legs of each stitch. I think you can kind of get the feel of what I'm doing here. I'm going under these legs of each of these stitches. I'm kind of skipping every one, making sure I'm still lined up Okay, as you can see, I'm starting to run out of yarn on my needle. Well, here is the trick for that. I'm gonna come back over here. All of these are loose. I can take my double pointed needle and just pull. 
And as you pull, you can feel which side it's coming from. And you'll watch as these stitches are coming together like magic. Look at that. Okay, then I'm going to come down here a little bit, pick up one of these stitches that goes back and forth, and pull. Now see how my cable, there's just a little tiny dip there, but everything is matching up. I'll work that through here too. Pull on the, now when you pull, you still have yarn over here and you have yarn over here. So be sure that when the side that you pull from is moving this side over here, otherwise you're gonna pull your yarn out of the other side and then you'll be sewing that back up again, okay? And you'll play around with your tension on here by what looks nice and how everything lines up without puckering too much. If you're off a little bit, it's okay. This is gonna be in the back of the neck, but I just think that this seaming method looks best with these cables and they match up so that everything is, is kind of a mirror image to each other. Okay, so I was there. I'm gonna scooch over here, grab this one. This is the second stitch on this leg of the twist. I get right in here to that first stitch. Now I'm coming towards the end here and I wanna start picking up every stitch because this is where I want it to be, have more strength. It's a little confusing because that's your garter ridge row and they all look the same, but just keep that eyeball line going right there. And there is my last one. Okay. Pull that through again, line that up, and there we go. Now we'll just go ahead and flip it inside out and we're going to um, wrap the yarn around, weave in our ends. And so now you have everything seamed up on your cable cow and you're ready to slide it on. Don't forget to use the locking stitch marker trick and move it each time you finish a cable row. Join me in the next episode while I show you how with some simple seaming, we can take this cable cow and turn it into a set of fingerless mitts. Remember, you can get a kit with the printed pattern and the yarn at OneBigHappy.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!